the Washing Makoga Enterprises. Today we are going to be discussing on cable tree. It's a very good and nice topic. Why we are carrying out installation on site, so we ensure that the size of cable tree that we've selected it conforms to the requirement of the project as well as the, the national or international standards, which is very important. So there are certain things that we are going to take into consideration. First, the space factor and the spare factor, which is very important. So we ensure that the sizes of cables that we have, those sizes of cables are going to accommodate in the cable tray size that we've selected, which is very important. But in this, to this lesson, we are going to be discussing or proof that the size of cable trays that we have, we can either mesh the two and fit in, in one cable tray, and then to prove to the consultant what we've done on site, it's correct and fit for use, which is very important. And the reason why we are doing all this is to ensure that the, the, the cost, we reduce the cost while we are procuring materials or the cable trays. So the question is, prove that TAC 16 cable tray can accommodate TAC 17.1 cable tray. It's very important. So while we've been able to identify from the layout the different sizes of cable trays, we should be able also to do calculation that the cable tray size that we've selected or probably what we have on the layout can fit in the size of cable so we reduce the cost by procuring two different cable tray, which is very important. Prove that tax 16 cable tray can accommodate tax 17.1 cable tray. So we move down now to the layout. So in the layout, we have different, we have two different cable trays, which is shown in the layout. So we should be able to identify now the tax 16 as well as tax 17. So we need this tax 17 to be able to fit inside. TAC 16 cable tray. So what is the size of TAC 16? TAC 16 is 900 by 50 LV cable tray, while TAC 17 is 100 by 50 mm LV cable tray. So after we've been able to identify these two different sizes of cable tray based on their different tax, so we'll be able now to go through the cable legend or probably the cable schedule to know exactly the different sizes of cables that are installed in the TAC 16 as well as TAC 17.1. So we prove now that the size of cable that is installed in 17.1 can fit inside TAC 16 without any issue. So we still have the different, we have the space factor and we maintain the space, the, the, we maintain the space factor as well as we still have a spare factor, which is very important. So we move down now to the, the cable schedule, as you can see, is the cable schedule that we have. Tax 16. So we have these different sizes of cables. So as you can see, we have uh, 13 different sizes of cables, which ranges from their different sizes. And then we have uh, their overall diameter of the cable, as well as where they are fitting from and where they are going to in the length of cable. So our main concern now is to identify the sizes of cables. We have how many numbers? We have 13 numbers and with different sizes. As you can see, we have 16 square mm cable, which is four core. We have four square mm, four core. We have um, 10 square mm, which is still four core. And then we have 70 square mm, four core as well. So these are the different sizes of cables that we have in TAC 16 with their different overall diameter of the cables. So we move to TAC 17.1. So in TAC 17.1, we have just one run of cable, one run of cable that is pulled inside TAC 17.1, which is 100 by 50 square mm, 100 by 50 mm power cable tree. So what is the size of cable, which is 444 square mm, PVC steel wire armor cable. So we still have a one core, four mm square PVC cable, which is for the head conductor. This is the overall diameter of the cable. So we now start performing our calculation to ensure that the size of cable that we have in TAC 17.1 can fit inside TAC 16 without any issue. We move to our solution. 
The solution now will move to TAC 16, which is the first uh, cable tray or the cable tray size that we need to fit in 17.1 into. So we have four cores, 70 square mm. Number of runs, which is one, as we've identified from here. If you check from the cable schedule, you notice that we have just one four core 70 square mm cable. We have just one. Then overall diameter of cable. So we move to a spare cable size. So in this case, we have already a different size of cables as well as the overall diameter. In this case, if we don't have, what we do is we go to either a national standard like um, we have a IEEE, which we could be able or probably go to the cable manufacturer catalog. You'll be able to identify what is the overall diameter of that cable. So for 70 square mm, 4 core 70 square mm, we have uh, 39.2 mm. So we have a total of 39.2, which is multiplied by one, it still gives back 39.2. So overall diameter of edge conductor, which is 9.9, .9, what size of cable have been used for edge conductor? One core 35 square mm, which is 9.9, .9, as you can see on the displayed um, cable schedule. So we have a total of 49.1 after we take uh, 39.2 plus 9.9 .9, so we have 49.1 the same goes for 4 core 16 square mm so we have a total five rounds the total the overall diameter which is 24.2 so we multiply 24.2 multiplied by 5 so we have 125 21 mm of diameter and then we have an uh, overall diameter of at conductor, which is what 7.1. So this 7.1 now we would check the, from the catalog 16 square mm cable. What is the size of at conductor that we've used? We have used 16. So we have 7.1. So we move here. This is we move here now. We have our 7.1. So we take this 7.1. Added with 121, so we have 20, 128.1. We move to 10 square mm cable, which is four core. We have just one run. We compute as well. We put all the different sizes of the di overall diameter as well. The size of a conductor, then we have a total uh, overall diameter of the cable. We move to four core, six square mm, which is one run. We put it in as well. We have four core, four square mm cable as well which is five runs we put in all the different parameters as well so we'll now move to 17.1 so we have a just four core four square mm that is installed in uh, the 17.1 tack cable tray which is 150 mm cable tray or power cable tray so overall diameter which is 19.7 so we compute and then we put our air conductor as well we have a total of 23.1 mm. So now we move here now to tax 16. The total overall diameter of tax 16 will be 333.7 mm. So total number of runs, which is 13. Okay, we know that electricity wiring code to 2018 section 6, part 6.16 cable tray. 6.16.13, sufficient space shall be provided. This is as per Karama rules and regulations. Sufficient space shall be provided and maintained around cable tray to permit adequate access for installing and maintaining the cables. This is very important. So while we are installing our cable trays, we should ensure all our cables inside the cable tray, we should ensure that we provide sufficient space for the installation as well as maintenance of the cables. So in this case, we have our space factor, which is 20 mm. So we take our 20 millimeter multiplied by 18, which is a 13 rounds of cable for tax 16, we will have 260 mm. So the width of the cables will be 333.7 plus the space factor, which we multiply by 20. So we are going to have 593.7 mm. Spare factor, 20% of this value that we have. So it's going to be 118.7. So total width of cables 
So we add now all both the, the cable size, that the size of the width of the cable that we selected, that we've uh, completed or calculated. So we add it now with the square factor. We're going to have 712.44 mm. So height of the cable tray will be the overall diameter of the highest cable, which is, in this case, we have 70 square mm. So the overall diameter will be 40. Okay, if we go now to our cable schedule, which is 70, our diameter is 39.2. So we now selected 40. So we move now to TAC 17.1. Overall diameter after doing our calculation was 23.9. As you can see here, 23.9. So we move now to space factor, the same thing that we did for TAC 16. We will have 20 mm width of cables. We'll do our calculation, space factor, spare factor, total width of the cable, we have that. And then now, after we've had 52.68 mm, so now we now come now adding tax 17.1 to 16. So what do we do? We take now 52.68 millimeter plus the size, the, the width of the cable, which is 712.44 from tax 16. So we're going to have 765.12 mm. Select the standard tray size. So in this case, now we go now to our cable manufacturer catalog. We download the catalog of the cable manufacturer that we are going to be using on site. So based on that, we'll be able to select the standard size that will be procured from the market. So in this case, we have um, 765.12 mm. So we have a cable tray size of 700 by 50, 700 by 100. So in this case, since our, this 765 is above 700, now we move now to the next cable tray size, which is 900 cable tray. So we selected by 50 because the overall diameter of the cable that should be selected as the height of the cable tray is 70 square mm as we could, we've seen above, which is 40 mm. So in this case, we will use 50 mm, which is the height of the cable tray as per our calculation. So if we refer to ICMS, if we refer to ICMS catalog 2018 or LANRIC or any other cable tray manufacturer, manufacturer for selection of sizes as per your supplier, you download the catalog and you ensure that the size of cables that you selected, it matches with the manufacturer's sizes of cable trees. So when you are procuring your materials, you procure the right materials from your manufacturer. So we now move now to the next point, which is, but as tax 16 is 900 square mm as per design, and 900 square mm is greater than 765.12 mm, as we've seen on your on our calculations here, 765.12. So you notice that 900 is greater than the value that we've done at the calculation value that we've had. So therefore it's accept, acceptable to join tax 17.1 to tax 16. So we now conclude that the size of cable tree which is tax 16, we can now merge 17.1 into tax 16 since we have a uh, different, the, the size, the, the calculation that we've performed, which is 765.12 mm cable tray that we've done our calculation, is still less than the size of cable that have been um, designed in our drawing. So our drawing shows 900 square mm and our calculation that we've done while meshing all these two different, all these two different cables that are installed in the different tags of cable trim, and we have still had a value which is less than nine hundred square and nine less than nine hundred mm. So we can attest that the size of cable tree, the size of cables that we have in seventeen point one, we can still fit in in tax sixteen cable tree, which is nine hundred mm or nine hundred by fifty mm cable tree. So as you can see here, we have these are the different sizes of cables and their different um, overall diameter of the cables. And then we have our spacing factors which we maintain. And then we also have our space factor, as you can see, for future or maintenance purpose.
which is very important. So after going through all these different calculations that we've done, you'll be able to do different sizes of cables or either proof that why what we are doing on site, it conforms to what we should be carrying out on site and it should fit uh, the standard and specification of the project, which is very important. So if we do different calculations as well, or selecting sizes of cables, we can still use the same procedure and to make sure that what we are carrying, what we are carrying out on site, it fits or conforms to the requirement of the project, which is very important. So this is our cable tray now on site which we've installed, and then we lay all the cable trays to ensure that we have uh, the spacing that we require. We ensure that we have the spacing that we require as well as the space factor, which is very important. We have the spacing and then we have as well as a spare factor also. So while we are carrying out the installation, we know that, okay, we get an approval for our cable tray size that have been selected. Um, we should also have an approval for the installation on site as well. So we've proof and we've ensured that the size of cable tray that we have for tax 16, we can now mesh in tax 17 into tax 16, which is very important. Thanks for watching. Until then, you're watching Akoga Enterprising.